commercial and say, mmm, honey, I can't believe it's not food. <laughs> you know, it's, I can't believe I'm eating We have so many <laughs> foods that, that are patented. It's not a food. <laughs> it's a chemical. It's, you know, GMOs or growing plants that make chemicals that plants aren't supposed to make. So if you're choosing to sweat it out, is it is it really relieving um, the duties of the kidneys? Yeah, it's a bypass for mm -hmm. the kidneys. We call the skin a third kidney. Mm -hmm. the, the function of the sweat glands in making the, the sweat is very, very similar to the kidneys function making the urine. So you can think of the kidney as a specialized sweat gland. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, never correlate the two, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that, part of the beauty of, of you know, as we go in, into deeper aspects of this model uh, is seeing those correlations like that even in medical training, we don't, don't get emphasized, we don't really get to see them. But when we start looking at the energetics of the body, when we look at, for example, the kidney meridian, we'll see, oh, the kidney meridian is blocked. It's got, you know, half the energy it should have and the skin meridian, which is uh, two doors over in relation to it, uh, uh, you know, a couple meridians over uh, on the foot, uh, it's not a classical acupuncture meridian, but it's one that was developed through German electroacupuncture where they measure these points mm -hmm. and correlate the, the things like a blocked measurement with an actual a tumor or a, a known, usually it's a pathological documented, you know, something you can have a photograph of. We know there's a lesion in this organ at that location, and we know there's an abnormal measurement on this acupuncture point on this finger toe or somewhere else in the body. And when they required three clinical cases to be reported with this, the identical correlation, showing the holographic patterning of the body, of the outside of the body, as a picture of the inside. And, and we can see this. Uh, this pattern in nature of holographic representation on a two-dimensional surface representing a three-dimensional internal reality in, in modern physics. It's one of the leading views in, in, in the cosmological physics that, that it's quite possible, they believe, that this experience, this world, this creation, this universe could be all happening on a two-dimensional plane such as on the surface of God's brain, mm -hmm. is one view, uh, my view. Um, in fact, when you look at the, if you look back, back, back at the big picture of the cosmos, and you look at, a good look in, in, in at the picture of our brain, the structure is very, very similar. Uh, the, the, the forms, the shapes, the spatial frequencies, you know, are sort of an octave resonance of each other. A fascinating clue that we may be living in a in a holographic fractal projection, making it no less real. It's as real as it, it is, as it seems to us. That only God can can do that. You know, have an image that is this real. But yeah, when we look at quantum physics, we say, well, there's really nothing there. Not not something as a thing. There's wave forms. It's so, and in in. In, in biology of, of brain function, consciousness, the prevailing view is, is that consciousness seems to be an epiphenomenon. What does that mean? It's, it's in the fields, the electromagnetic fields that are put off by the functioning of our brain cells. Well, we're seeing that same thing on the cosmological level. It seems to be that this whole creation is an epiphenomenon of Brain cells is the pattern that we see in it on the large scale of a creator's brain function. Mm -hmm. So it's an epiphenomenon of an epiphenomenon, <laughs> making it no less real. But the mathematics of a fractal are, are the best example that I can, can think of, that, that, and this is what they're seeing, that we're seeing in, in science at every level, that a fractal is, is a uh, a spa it can be a spatial mathematical progression like growth, like the growth of a, a tree. It has, it has a trunk and it branches into branches and those branches into smaller branches and those branches into smaller branches. And so it's a pattern that, that continues the same form over and over at, at ever bigger or smaller scales. Wherever we look, we see the same pattern and that's what, what, what's coming together in, in the, uh, the theory of everything. Uh, just this week, um, uh, confirming 
that, that we have evidence that, and, and, and well thought out theories, that we're seeing the same pattern in the cosmos, in the human form, in the subatomic mm -hmm. level. Uh, the, the best one that, that carries through is a dodecahedron. In, in cosmology, they've come to the conclusion the most accurate shape of the, the, the cosmic background, microwave background radiation, there's form there that's, that's a coherent, like a resonance pattern, that's the best fit is a dodecahedron. And we can go back in time and see, you know, Plato talking about the same thing. We know that he got the idea uh, to some degree from, from uh, Pythagoras. Uh, but there's, and there's also evidence that it probably came from the Celts, from the Druids, from the, the British Isles area. And, and Plato in his writings actually states that it's handed down from Atlantis. Mm. Ooh, it's, you know, I mean, and we, a lot of people don't think that there's anything real about that, but, but we don't really know. And some people think Atlantis was around the British Isles. Yeah, well, the, the, the idea is that somewhere, Atlantean, Atlantic Ocean area, there's debates that could be in the Mediterranean, it could be in the Atlantic. The, the, the location isn't particularly crucial as far as the concept that there may be some earlier knowledge from actually intelligent, high-level, advanced civilizations. I mean, if we look at the understanding of cosmology, both in the New World and the Old, we have, we have uh, you know, from the Egyptians to, to Central America we've, and, and, and Asia as well, there's pyramids that, that are highly aligned to the heavens, you know, extremely accurate. Uh, so, so that's what I'm looking at in, the, in putting in the book and in lots more detail, my notes and research about uh, the correspondence of, you know, as above, so below, that, that we have this fractal mathematics that plays out on every level of what we can see. That, that if we look at, uh, I think I mentioned this in one of the other segments, that if, if we look at our consciousness, the central wavelength is the alpha rhythm at 10 hertz. If we look at everything we can see, small and from the smallest to the largest, that 10 hertz is in the exact center on a geometric mm. level. So it's, we're seeing our universe. We're in the center of our universe. The old idea, the old perspective of the Earth being in the center of the cosmos is, is not so uh, irrational as we project. It's in the center of our cosmos. Mm -hmm. We're having this experience. I'm in the center of my world. If I think that Washington, D.C. is the center of the world, and I'm in Hawaii, that's not a real functional way to actually live with this creation. I need to, for example, or, or that, you know, we have 90% of our food coming in by ship. To live on this island really appropriately means to me to be able to grow our food, to grow our medicine, because we know that, that historically, geologically, we live in a world that has this punctuated equilibrium. That's the fractal mathematics of it, is that there's dramatic change at times. All it takes is a little dramatic change mm -hmm. to disrupt shipping worldwide, mm -hmm. you know? whether it's the shipping itself, whether it's the oil that runs the ships. We rely on so many systems that are so large that there's many opportunities for the regulation of those to be blocked. And our systems are designed to be self-regulating within this body and within families and communities on a small local scale, and that's much more resilient to, to dramatic change. Can you talk about how else you can measure where, how you are blocked or where you're blocked, something's not working. Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, electrically we measure it by the, the flow of electricity through the body's direct current circuits, called classically meridians or, or vessels. Uh, these are electrical, electrically conducted vessels of extracellular fluid and the level of biological activity, the, actually the, from the meta view that I take, it's the level of, uh, of light, the photon content, that determines the electrical conductivity. So if there's a lack of light, 
in that uh, kidney meridian, it's going to show up as a low, what most people think of as conductivity, uh, really impedance is a technical measure. So, so we have ways of measuring it. More important with regulation, I feel, is the symptomatic level of regulation that you can know if your regulation is blocked. If you do the things that you know, you're studying what to do about your health, what's, maybe it's weight loss. I've tried every diet, I've tried this and that, and nothing works. That to me is blocked regulation. You know, I can measure it electronically in the system and maybe not know to what degree, you know, how deep that blockage is. It may clear up in a month or it may not. And that's, you know, how blocked is it? How embedded is that blocked regulation? And so if you're telling me, I've tried everything, I tried herbs and homeopathy and nutrition, I tried, I even tried an over-the-counter medication, nothing works for me. Now the medication may work the best in that case because it's going to block more pathways. So you're going to have more leverage to change. If you're using natural things, they're going to not tend to block those channels because we try to avoid toxins or toxic levels of things. Even if they are toxins, we might use a homeopathic of, of a heavy metal that's a non-toxic dosage. There's a study on rats that showed rats exposed to arsenic. They excreted about a third of the ar arsenic that they were exposed to, and two-thirds were stored in the tissues. Then the rats were exposed to a homeopathic non-toxic dosage, mostly the energy, a little bit of substance, but mostly the energy. Uh, and they excreted half of what was stored, so another third came out with homeopathic stimulation. So, so the goal is to understand that if things aren't working, still do the best good things you can. Maybe you know, reach out and find more perspective, uh, but also continue. Not necessarily continue the same thing, because when things are blocked, that might be the thing that's stimulating a pathway that is blocked, and so it's ability to be therapeutic. So we may need to stimulate alternate pathways, like the sweating, to get things out. Um, but we want to get out of that blocked regulation, and the first clue that you're moving out of blocked regulation is the next phase is called negative regulation. That means you feel worse. Mm. So if you, oh, you know you should get in shape, you got to exercise, and you start, oh, you do a, so maybe even a little bit of exercise, and you feel junk, you feel worse. That's a clue of where you're at. You're in negative regulation. You're going to feel worse before you feel better. But you know, if you haven't been jogging and you start jogging, you may feel worse before you feel better. You are moving toxins. You're sweating them out. You're helping to clean your system out. You're going to br break down fat storage that's storing toxic mm -hmm. material. Like we know every, every, every animal, plant the, the, on the planet, the, the ice caps all have DDT in them and other pesticides. Uh, so, and those are stored in fat tissue. So if we're burning fat, we're going to release those. You know, again, reasons why people maybe have a hard time losing weight. They may need a different kind of support or stimulation for eliminating the toxins that are stored in that fat tissue. It's not all calories. So that negative regulation often will be short term. The most typical thing would be a th about a three day period, what we call a healing crisis, a cleansing reaction. If it's a die off of bacteria or fungus, they're releasing endotoxins, and we, and we call it a Herxheimer reaction in medicine. You're going to have that taking an antibiotic, not necessarily from the antibiotic directly, but from what you're killing off, releasing its toxins more rapidly. So you need extra fluids, water mm -hmm. to, to dilute and flush those out. You need, you know, to be good to right. the system and help it through that time, not say, oh my god, I'm having a reaction. I, oh, oh, I have a fever. It's 101 degrees. I better take an aspirin. Well, aspirin is going to stop that reaction of the immune system, which is intelligently designed to clean the system out. Mm -hmm. So now you're putting yourself back in a blocked, low-energy state mm -hmm. for whatever tissue it was that's cleaning out. Uh, when we get enough out that we're starting to feel a little better, it may be mixed at first. We call it mixed regulation. There's still some negative, still some symptoms. Oh, when I, when I work out, I still ache the next day, but you know, I, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting in shape. I, I, I have more energy. I feel better, you know, mentally. We, we look in homeopathy, we learn this re really well, that uh, 
on the deeper levels of our spirit, our consciousness, our soul, our, our sleep, our energy level, our elimination systems, like how are the kidneys working, how are the bowels working, those are places to look for our deeper layers of regulation. If those are getting better while we're feeling junk, good, good. Ride it through with support, you know, do what you need to to be safe, but, but help your body through. Don't push it back. Mm -hmm. uh, so we move through the, the negative and the mixed regulation to where we have the ideal positive regulation or optimum regulation is the, the top level. Positive or optimum regulation, we do the things that we know are good for us and we can actually enjoy them. We feel better for doing that. We know we're doing a, a good job when, we, when you know, uh, if, if a child is, is eating good healthy foods, fresh local raw foods, and, and, and he has some sugar or soda, goes to a birthday party and has cake and ice cream, and he feels, you know, a uh, little negative regulation from that, a little junk from the, the things that are not good for us, that's good. That's, that's, that would be positive regulation, mm -hmm. to feel bad from something that is bad. Mm -hmm. That's inf accurate information. Right. Yeah, so that's the, the big picture of, you know, the, the big thing is how do we get out of the blocked regulation, and before that, how do we even know that we're there? It's an important concept for us to know that if things aren't working that should work, whether it's just our body's function or whether it's healing modalities that you know, are, are prescribed by a knowledgeable practitioner, don't give up because it didn't help the first time, the first month. How long did it take you to get there? Mm -hmm. You know, rule of thumb is give it at least one month for every year it took you to get there to see some results. When I was dying of heavy metal toxicity, uh, and this would be nearly 30 years ago now, uh, it took me about a year to move into negative regulation. I was praying to get a fever. I was praying to feel worse, praying, and until I felt worse, and I was like praying to get through it, because it can be very intense. But in the old days, you know, we read older literature, and in, in just spiritual literature as well as medical literature, and they knew the healing crisis was a crucial time. You need to be there and support it, but you could be healed. You might die. So, so it's not something to take lightly. It's like uh, if something is passing, it's you got to let it pass gracefully, otherwise it could kill you. Yeah, you got to trust that your body is actually not trying to kill you, mm -hmm. first of all. The body's not dumb, it's not wrong, it's not trying to kill you. So you want to support and stimulate body function, stimulate alternate pathways like the skin for the kidneys, stimulate function like, you know, hey, if your bowels aren't moving and you have a high fever, that's not good. There's at, all those the toxins time, being absorbed. Did you know to expect that? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was trained to expect that, which was a, a great blessing. Otherwise, it would have been really challenging to you know, spend all that money, take all those remedies, you know, travel to my doctor in another country. Uh, for what? I'm not feeling any better, and my symptoms weren't all that bad. My symptoms weren't all that bad. Well, I was forgetting my name, and you know, it was like just mental symptoms at age 30. But the 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 the, the objective tests, the uh, bioelectric.